Upon completion of this video, you should be able to describe a circuit with components and conductors, explain the meaning of a voltage difference between two points in a circuit, and explain how voltages and currents combine in a circuit. Here is a diagram of a simple circuit with two elements, element 1 and element 2, and conductors. We assume that every element in a circuit has a zero net charge at all times. Regions inside an element may have a positive or negative net charge, but overall the element is neutral. Every element has two or more connection points and current flows into and out of the elements only through the connection points. The total current flowing in all contacts and the total current flowing out all contacts must balance, and that is to say, charge flowing in one connection point must be balanced by charge flowing out another connection point. There are various symbols for different types. Conductors are paths through which current flows into and out of elements. They are represented by lines. Conductors also always have zero net charge. Current flows into conductors and out of conductors, and into and out of junctions between conductors, but the total flowing in and the total flowing out must balance. This is one of the laws of the theory of circuits. As we discussed, current in a conductor is considered to flow in the direction in which positive charges would flow if they made up the current. There are classical or conventional current. Let's look at two points in this circuit, point A and point B, located on the conductors between element 1 and element 2. We are interested in the potential energy per positive coulomb of charge at point A and point B. We'll call the potential energy per positive coulomb at point A E sub A and E sub B will be the potential energy per positive coulomb at point B. Mobile electrons at these points actually have potential energies, negative E sub A and negative E sub B. Potential energy is always relative to the position of other bodies, not absolute. A charge moving as part of the current in a circuit has a different amount of potential energy at different points in the circuit. A charged object's potential energy at any point in a circuit is proportional to the amount of charge it has. And the potential energy per unit charge is the same for any charge at a specific point in a circuit. We call this difference between the potential energy per positive coulomb at two points the voltage between these two points. The voltage between A and B is the potential energy per coulomb at A relative to the potential energy per coulomb at B. We show this on a circuit diagram by putting a plus sign at A and a minus sign at B. We can also discuss the voltage between B and A, which is the potential energy per coulomb at B relative to the potential energy per coulomb at A. We show this on a circuit diagram by putting a plus sign at B and a minus sign at A. The voltage at B relative to A is the negative of the voltage at A relative to B. Since potential energy is measured in joules and charge is measured in coulombs, the unit of voltage is joules per coulomb. A joule per coulomb is also called a volt. We use V as a symbol for volts. In an ideal circuit, the potential energy or voltage anywhere on a specific conductor is the same. This is another law of the theory of circuits. Voltage is measured between two points, such as between points A and B. As points B and C are on the same conductor, the voltage between them is zero. Suppose now that there is a voltage V sub AB between points A and B, and a current I is flowing in the conductors as shown. The current must be the same at all points in the upper conductor, or else charge would accumulate in the conductor. The current out of component 1 must be equal to the current into component 1, or else charge would accumulate in component 1. The current must be the same at all points in the lower conductor, or else charge would accumulate. And of course, the current out of component 2 must be equal to the current into component 2. If you put two components in series, the voltage across the two of them is the sum of the voltages across each of them. The current in each battery must be the same. We see here a simple battery circuit used in toys and many other battery power products. If you add the voltages going around a loop in a circuit, they must add to zero. In this case, if you start at the bottom and go around the loop clockwise, you will add voltages up to 3 volts going past the batteries. 
Then the product being powered will have negative 3 volts coming from the far side of the product as you go from the upper connection to the lower one, so the total when you get back to the bottom will be zero. If two conductors carrying currents meet at a junction in a circuit and both feed into a third conductor, the current going into the third wire is the sum of the two currents feeding into it. This is necessary because otherwise charge would build up at the junction.